That's LCD Sound System with North American Scum. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, here with you until midday, 12 o'clock. That's the central point of the day when absolutely everything changes and you get a chance to start again. The pivot. The pivot of the day, yes. That was quite exhausting for the first track, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he's he's got some issues with, uh, North, with Americans. The North Americans. He doesn't like himself. And it was up-tempo. Oh, I think we're going to have to calm it down a bit later. You, we've got some mellow songs. I picked out a couple of really pretty mellow things to play this week. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with uh, my free plays this morning. We've got some Jim O'Rourke coming up, mm. some Tribe Called Quest. Uh, yeah, some really good music. Some Van Morrison, that's your one, Adam. Yeah. Some great session tracks. We'll, of course, be resolving uh, last week's Song Wars, which prompted the largest ever voting response Ooh, in the history of the entire Isle of Wight. Of the entire Isle of Wight. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, no, in the, in the history of Song Wars, yeah. I think we've got more votes than ever before. Oh, my Lord. Mm. That's not going to do me any favours, though, let me guess. Uh, just to remind listeners that Song Wars is where Joe and myself write a song each week, with a, usually with a theme suggested in part by the listeners, and we battle it out to see who wins. I've I've lost every single week That's for the last true. seven weeks, That's except, true. except once. Yeah, your eponymous once. song for a listener, so that wouldn't be eponymous, would it? That one. Yeah, yeah. Song Wars has become an awful uh albatross <laughs> around our necks no it's good man we've got a whole album's worth of great songs and people love listening to those songs i started mine at 4 30 last night no finished way. At, finished at 9 30 this morning no uh last night oh i see yeah 4 30 that's technically the afternoon you're aware of that yeah 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 right. but still i got home from a very busy day right i had a very busy week God. all i wanted to do was watch telly we've all had a busy week but you have to oh, fit your song wars in. Wrinkles. <laughs> anyway, we'll be hearing the fruits of Joe's labour and mine as well. Christmas songs was the theme this week. Mm. So we'll be unveiling our Christmas songs and we'll be finding out who won last week's song wars where we had to uh, write an imaginary outro theme from a movie that never really had one. Joe wrote one for The Shining. I wrote one for The Hours. And we'll find out who won that uh, within the next half hour. But now I think it's time we played some more great music here at uh, Six Music. Hold tight. This is The White Stripes. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. My name is Joe. I would like to go to a good show, like Billy Elliot or The Lion King. But I cannot, because I cannot afford to get in. That's good, man. I yeah. love that rap. <laughs> yeah. It's very simple. It's from the early days of rap. Is it? Proto yeah, rap? it was one of the first raps. That's why it's so very basic. Yeah, Neolithic rap. Yeah. Hey, listen to this jingle. It's time for song wars. The war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of proms. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. And we've got Ben here. He's uh, not our regular producer, but we're very happy to have him here. I think Jude is a bit ill today, our regular producer. I hope you're getting getting better, Jude, if you're listening. We miss you. She's um, not listening. She's, she might be. You never know. So I bet she's not. I mean, if I was her, I wouldn't be. Jude, yeah. if you're listening, text 64046. If you're not, uh, then you might go down in our estimation like a <laughs> tiny bit of a millimetre. I should go up in mine, man. If really? I, if I was ill, I'd be lying in. I would be way no, asleep. No, she should take her job really seriously. Really seriously. She should listen to every word. Mm. She should be making notes. That's true. She should mm. be. Yeah, she Ben's should be. nodding. You see, Ben will be, li ben will be listening. <laughs> I will be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're li Ben's listening now. Ben, I was going to say that uh, sometimes our Song Wars songs tend to be a little quiet, so you've really got to crank up the volume, because I hate the idea that we put all this work into them and then they just dribble out of the speakers. Crank up the volume crank up the volume. But now it's time to find out which one of our songs, our exit music for films that never were, has won Song Wars. Ben's passing me the results sheet. Before Nothing. we go to the results, let's have a look at some of the emails oh that we've got in, in our very big uh, post bag that we've had this week. And we really have had more texts, uh, not texts, emails than ever before. <clears throat> Giles Pocklington, uh, he's emailed in before. Hey, Pockles. It's just the same four people who've it's emailed mainly, in yeah. many times. It's nice. Dear Adam and Joe, what a thrill it was to hear Joe pick my suggestion for The Shining on a dull Monday afternoon. Uh, Giles suggested that I did uh, the, the closing credits music for The Shining. 
uh, and and now he's uh, emailing to thank me. A very good effort too, apart from the nonsensical last few lines, which, if we're to be honest, were utter tosh. <gasps> I have to say, Adams, the hours song was really good. No, really, a vote for Buxton. Mm. So started off select, positive on I the joke. I select his tip, song, though. yeah, and he doesn't even vote for it. He said if he was stroking you for a little while with one hand, then he reached around and slapped, slapped you. Slapped me with the other That's one. Bad parenting. That's bad parenting. Greetings, loves, says Lucy Loftus. I wholeheartedly vote for Adam this week. It's foot tappingly funky and clearly a better song. Joe, however, is clearly feeling so smug about his hearty lead that he thinks he can farm out ballad based rubbish and still win. His song was so awful, it prompted my husband to stomp into the room and shout, What muck have you bought now? Whoa. Joe, hang your head. Hang your head. That's People a bit are harsh. so cruel. Listen, I can't help feeling happy about the sentiment, but um, <laughs> that's a bit much. Wait, you get this though. Martin Workman. Uh, he works for MCM Productions. They're yeah. a video events and broadcast graphics production. He writes, uh, Subject Song Wars. Both a bit rubbish. Well below par in the comedy stakes. <laughs> you guys just recounted what happened in the films rather than giving a subjective comedy take on them. A la, oh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. It was like a film review with no opinions. Nice. Well, and that's in the comedy stakes. That's not even within our own parameters. Is that ironic in any way? No. That's ju he's just he's opinionated just furious. and furious. He's absolutely <laughs> furious about it. Um, <laughs> quite right. What's his name again? His name is... Uh, Mr. Workman. Martin Workman. Martin the Workman. Quite yeah. right, Martin. Keep those standards uh, maintained. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, you know. That's, that's um, harsh. But it's harsh, Martin, because when you consider, like, we're not saying we're musical geniuses, but we certainly put a lot of effort into these. M some more than others, depending on the week. Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you just run out. Of yeah, time. hey, look, we've had a, we've had a text. <gasps> we've had one text. You can text us on 64046. That'll be more relevant uh, when we ask you to vote for Song Wars, but that'll be the new Song Wars. This is the old Song Wars, so let's check the results. Ready? Yeah, let's find out who won. So it was Adam's song about the hours, uh, the film directed by Billy Elliot. Man, what's his name? Uh, Stephen Daltrey. There you go. Uh, all about Virginia Woolf. Yeah. Uh, based on, was it based on Mrs. Dalloway? Mrs. Dalloway was mm. there. Was and it was a very good song. I would have voted for your song. Would you? Yeah, I would. Mm. Uh, or it was my song about The Shining and oh my gosh what is it you've won again haven't you oh my god do you really think i've won yeah no you've won by 86 <gasps> percent to 14 for joe it's a landslide landslide no surprise to me a very good song this week land. Uh, so let's uh, have another listen to adam's song you've got to imagine what's the final shot of the hours then now you're asking it's um, probably virginia wolf going for the swim in the river it may well be with to tie the whole thing down. That's with how stones. it starts. Yeah, so it's probably it's probably bookended. I would think so. You know, uh, so imagine that happening. Virginia's plastic nose goes under the water, <laughs> and then the credits roll, and you hear this. Dearest, I feel certain that I'm going mad again. I begin to hear voices, so I am doing what seems to be the best thing to do. My life has been stolen from me. You tried to kill yourself twice. I'm dying in this town. Virginia Woolf is writing Mrs. Dalloway. It is about a woman's day making party plans. A housewife in the 50s is reading Mrs. Dalloway. A woman in the noughties is making party plans. Three women with unwelcome obligations to the men in the lives that they feel they never chose. All of them depressed and wishing they could just escape like Virginia Woolf with her wonky plastic nose. I choose not the suffocating anaesthetic of the suburbs, but the violent jolt of the capital. That is my choice. This is my right. It was done for you! It was done for your betterment! It was done out of love! It was a tragedy that Virginia Woolf felt she had to drown herself just because she was depressed and she was bisexual. In those days, both those subjects were not well understood. Nowadays, there's lithium and lots of bendy friends. Yes! How will you fill up the hours of your lady life? Will you serve pathetic men? Will you be a wife? I choose life. Will you just read Grazia and bake your stupid cakes? Does that really make you happy? I think you deserve a lovely party. There we go.
go. Powerful stuff. Uh, the winner of Song Wars this week, Adam Song from The Hours. Uh, yes, skills. Well done, man. That's very good. I, I would have voted for that. Thanks, I think man. that's a well-deserved win. That's very magnanimous of you. Yeah, I don't mean it. I'm angry. <laughs> uh, here's this. Is, are we playing the, the Stranglers no, now? we're going to have some it? real music now. This is from a real man who's made a whole career out of making music, and it's one of his best songs. Here's Lou Reed. <laughs> That was George Michael with Faith. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It wasn't George Michael with Faith. Uh, it was Lou Reed. Here's uh, Eric Fisher with the news. That's the charlatans with Love is the Key. So, uh, you know, if Love is the Key, what's the door? Uh, that's too rude at this time of the morning, Adam. Okay. Got you. You, you get me? I think I do get you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, listen, I'm, uh, I'm just flicking through. This is Adam and Joe, today. We just got an email from someone saying, Who are you? It was a text. It was a text. Just furious. You, who are you? He probably switched on and he, he was embroiled in lots of Song Wars stuff and just thought, I don't know who these people are, but they're very involved in their own strange business and it, it makes me very angry. So he thought he'd text in and let us know. So listen, we're Adam and Joe. Uh, we're just two human beings. We're from the 90s. We're from the 90s. Uh, we were on television once a very long time ago. And uh, here we are. Uh, I've just been flicking through the uh, We Love Telly magazine, uh, from which magazine is this? Oh, the Daily Mirror. And it's got all the Christmas telly stuff in it. Wicked. Wicked. There's a lot of good, well, there's a lot of telly coming up on the Christmas and uh, things like extras. Ooh, the extras Christmas special on Thursday the 29th, 27th of December. Be interested in that. That's the last one ever. They'll never make another one. No more extras. Uh, and uh, what else have we got? Uh, What's the point? What is the point? The point is all this great Christmas telly that we're going to be seeing. But no, um, one of the things I'm very excited about is Noel's Christmas presents. Now, you were saying there's some trail on for it at the yeah, moment? Yeah, if you own an evil Murdoch box uh, and get Murdoch telly, uh, then watch out for Noel Edmonds' new uh, trail. He's obviously had a massive renaissance, Noel, with Deal or No Deal, mm. um, and uh, Sky have paid him a lot of money to host Are You Smarter Than a Ten-Year-Old? And he's kind of had a renaissance, hence the return of his Christmas Day show. Well, he's very, he's quintessentially Christmassy in many ways. I mean, his name is Noel, for it's a start. True. Uh, he looks a tiny bit like Jesus. True. Uh, he's... A, a he's got magical powers. He's got magical powers. He rose again from the dead. That's true. Um, and he can probably turn water into some kind of Keanu. Fizzy, fizzy pop. Yeah. But when, uh, if you were, uh, like a kiddie in the 80s and stuff, he had a show every Christmas day, wasn't it? And didn't it come from the top of the post office tower? What, what was tower. then known as the post office tower? Yeah. Uh, before the post office was, uh, what? No, before it was sold to BT or whatever. Right. And, uh, he would get all sorts of disadvantaged people and give them amazing presents. Well, this show's been bought back, uh, for Sky, I think, over Christmas, and he's done the most demented trail in, I think, in the history of trails <laughs> for it. Do watch out for it. Now, he's obviously, he does genuinely have magic powers, because the, the, the thing about Deal or No Deal is it's all to do with luck, yeah. isn't it? And it's all to do with, uh, you know, calling on higher forces. He's got this weird mystical, um, kind of weird quasi religion that he's he's written a book hasn't he about all cosmic ordering it's called that's right if you want something from life you just ask the sky i'd like a bmw yeah give me a bmw and according to noel you'll just get one something like that i might be over <laughs> overly simplifying it i might not right it's something like that so he's kind of turning into a sort of tv uh david ike type person mm. uh vaguely anyway in his trail uh, I couldn't really take it all in the other night when I saw it, but uh, there are some people having a party, and someone's given a massive present, and they open it, and Noel comes out. <laughs> and they look astonished. Uh, uh, is he wearing clothes? <laughs> yeah, as far as I could see, he's wearing clothes. Then there was another quick shot of Noel dressed as a nun. <laughs> <laughs> approaching some women and smiling in a really creepy way and then the final sucker punch was noel you know in in that way he was standing in a studio and he was standing uh three quarters onto the camera mm. do you know that way people stand it's the way that page three girls stand yeah that you never do in life yes but you do i don't know when you're trying to look authoritative news readers sometimes do it people it, it's basically the trail stance it's a flattering three pose. quarters on and turn to the camera yeah, like that yeah and he does that and he says i believe in the power of christmas Oh, my Lord. Mm. So he doesn't believe in Christmas. Yeah. He hates Christmas, but he believes in the power of Christmas. Right. But he says it uh, uh, as if he's ushering in at some kind of new religious dawn. Well, you know what I mean? He's, he's doing some amazing stuff in this show. I mean, it was apparently recently voted one of the top ten Christmas shows of all time. Personally, when it used to come on, it would be the only bad bit about Christmas for me. I used to enjoy it. Did you? Yeah, I like to see people in the forces 
giving messages to their loved ones. Well, he's got a little bit of that. Uh, he says, Noel takes a group of mums, dads and kids who have lost loved ones in Iraq and Afghanistan on a magical trip to Lapland. Because that's what they need. That's good. I think that's in the trail. Right, right. So they're off to Lapland. But, uh, and what else have we got? It's all heartwarming stuff. A nine-year-old... So the sort of logic is, well, there's always Santa. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Don't worry. Which is not that comforting because of various, you know, facts about Santa. I just think how much fun could it be for the families involved? You know what I mean? Like making TV is not an enjoyable process generally. And uh, when they when they go off there with the crew and they have to do all their little retakes or whatever and the travelling and the knoll and... I tell you what, we'll have to watch it. Yes, that's and, true. And, and talk about it in, in the new year. Well, you can watch it on Sunday the 23rd of December on uh, Sky One at 6pm. That's Knoll's Christmas Presents. But right now, here's some more music. This is Balloons. Is it Balloons with Foles or Foles with Balloons? No, it's Foles with Balloons. That's Foles with Balloons. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're with you until midday today. And it's time now to launch the nation's favourite feature. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, text the nation, the time of the show where we, and uh, pay attention to this because it's complicated, ask you to text us about things. Things. Uh, this week's subject is stupid, stupid, stupid lies you've told. Stupidest lie you've ever told, with possibly the worst consequences. Like, the worse the consequences, the more... Yeah, nothing hear. awful. No, nothing we don't want to hear morbid. about, like, death or... Uh, well, you can send them in, but we're unlikely to read them out. Yeah, or if it ends up with, with like, you know, uh, I, I was divorced and I was never happy again. That would be fine. My children That'd left me. That would be fine. Really? Yeah. That's no good. No, we don't really want Wouldn't to be fine. It's not Christmassy. Not very Christmassy, that's Christ true. Send them to Noel. Uh, Noel will do a show, he'll do a little slot on his show for them, but we don't really deal with anything like that. Uh, last week, was it last week? I think it was last week. I was, I was telling, uh, Adam and you listeners how once I told a girl that I had a bad heart <laughs> in order to get her to snog me. Uh, I told her I had a terrible, and this is tempting fate in a, in a very, uh, you know, silly way. That's right. I told her I had a kind of a, a dodgy valve <laughs> and that I wasn't long for this world and she'd better get in there quick -o's. Mm. If she wanted a piece of the corns. And it worked. <laughs> a nugget of corn. She got a little corn on the cob. She did. <laughs> <laughs> she had a nibble. I had a nibble. Mmm, butter all around my mouth. Okay. What? Nothing. Um, so it worked. and she... It did work, but I do regret it. That was a terrible, terrible, That's terrible, insane. stupid, horrible thing You know, if, if the consequences were really dire, you could string that out to a whole film and call it The Boy with the Bad Heart, because it would be uh, like... It would work on two levels, two wouldn't levels. it? Like a, like a two-leveled car park. Exactly, or a, a bungalow with an extra level on top of the bungalow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here are some emails we've had in over the week. Hi, Adam and Joe. Uh, this is from Damien Radcliffe. Um, I lied in primary school in an assembly held by a priest man. Mm. He asked us all, who's been to Palestine? I put up my hand with absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why. Compulsion? <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to be the centre of attention. I've been to Palestine, that's a good one. Have you been to Palestine? No! Why did you put your hand up? I don't know! I like that kind of thing. I bet, Damien, I bet you're quite clever. Yeah. I think that's the kind of thing a clever person I does. I bet you could have bluffed it, man. Uh, Anne-Marie Adair has sent in an email saying, I faked my discus scores in third year senior school PE lessons because I was embarrassed at how bad the real scores were, but I faked them too well and got chosen to throw discus at the school sports day to my to dem uh, due to my seemingly amazing abilities <laughs> i was obviously dismal at it but it taught me a lesson in a wonder years kind of way yeah that's good that is good and presumably i wonder if she then lied about being bad at discus on the day do you think she you know what she should have said what she said i've got a heart I've condition got a bad heart. <laughs> i've got a dodgy <laughs> valve and my arm's gone limp that's what i would have said yeah. but the whole business of cheating in exams that's a kind of different kettle of fish because i i mean the big british castle would not recommend this kind of behavior but no. but 
I cheated like a man possessed. Well, you were in prison for about 15 years. For, <laughs> I wasn't. I got away with it. For the cheating you done. Scot free. And I'm trying to imply to listeners that it doesn't pay to cheat. It doesn't pay to cheat. That's right. I've been in a kind of a mental prison of guilt. Yes, that's true. That's true. I and, did a uh, little bit of cheating as well, for which I served time and was uh, badly tortured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a Spanish exam, I yeah. went and hid a Spanish Spanish dictionary. Spanish silly, anyway. I hid a Spanish dictionary uh, behind the U-bend of the lavvy. And did then, you? And then asked to go to the lab. That's a different kettle of fish, though, cheating, really, isn't it? We're not after cheating. We're off no. to lying. Yeah, exactly. Hannah Arif says, Dear Adam and Joe, when I was about six, our teacher at school asked us one day if we'd ever seen Santa Claus. I was completely amazed when people said they had. How jealous I was when I found out people had seen him on Christmas Eve putting out their presents. My favourite story was the elaborate tale of Robert Rawlinson, who proceeded to tell us how he woke up on Christmas Eve to see Santa's boots on the landing. He then heard that someone was taking a shower, so he went to investigate. And what did he find? Why Santa, of course, taking a shower in his house. I was amazed, flabbergasted, and to be honest, very jealous. Although at the time I remember thinking that his mum was probably having an affair with Santa. But I didn't tell Robert this in case I burst his bubble. But there's a song about that. Uh, I saw mummy kissing Santa Claus. That's true. And uh, it's, a, it's a sort of faintly disturbing song because you think that would scar you, you know. Even however much you like Santa, you don't want to see him snog your mum because that's revolting. I mean, yeah. that's horrible, isn't Why it? Why not? Santa's a sexy well, man. It, yeah, but it casts aspersions on your mum. It turns your mum into a kind of... No, what mum could resist Santa? Really? Honestly, that big belly, the bushy beard, <laughs> <laughs> all the presents, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the idea of living with lots of elves. Can you imagine? He's probably in got... A big factory. <laughs> bits all over his beard. He probably stinks. It'd be like going out with Mr. Majorium <laughs> and living in his wonder emporium. <laughs> I want to talk to you about that <laughs> later on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, here's another one from Clash 77. Uh, no, sorry, it's from Rob in Birmingham. That was his tag. Mm. He's a member of one of the biggest gangs in Birmingham. He's a very dangerous man, Rob. Um, he's not. <laughs> Hi, Adam and Joe. You asked for the stupidest lies you've ever told, so here's mine. As a child one evening, whilst playing outside, I thought it would be really clever if I span around and round as fast as I could to impress my friends. He span. <laughs> span. That's not the lie. Unfortunately, I lost my balance and banged my head, cutting it and making myself cry in the process. What will I tell people? I cried as I noticed the nasty cut. Don't worry, said a friend. I've got a plan. And he came up with an excellent cover story which involved me being set upon by a group of lads from a rival tougher school and me coming out on top with only this gash on my head to show. No way. It's all right. We'll back your story up, they reliably told me. He is a member of a gang. The next day when I went to school, word had got out and crowds gathered round me in the playground <laughs> to see if it was true. Harder lads patted me on the back. Girls, girls touched the cut on my head and they even started chanting rocky rocky no in my honor way. already i was beginning to feel the pressure as the lie built up inside of me and my story became less convincing by each question i was asked by dinner time i could sense my friends had grown jealous of my celebrity and were going to spill the beans by afternoon break they'd done this and in the short space of seven hours i'd gone from hero to zero oh. i walked home from school alone and can remember the cutting comments such as look it's frank bruno and ear lads can you smell bs <sighs> To this day, I've never told a lie since. Hey, good I'm not one. sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for those uh, emails and texts. Please keep them coming in on the subject of the stupidest lie you've ever told. Yeah, those were just teasers uh, to get your stories coming in. Text 64046 or email uh, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Uh, now, very shortly, we're going to be unveiling the, our new Song Wars efforts uh, for this week. But before that, I think we should have quite a lot of exciting music and maybe a wonderful trail are we having a wonderful trail now ben not another one hey what's wrong with don't this cast... show's becoming a trailer park because it's so popular everyone wants to put their trail in is that so no okay that's... here it is <laughs> that soft cell with bed sitter that's a session track recorded for the richard skinner show on radio one on the 26th of july 1981 the Skinmeister. That was a good version of uh, Bedsit Land as well. Yeah, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Happy Saturday morning. We're coming to the end of the first hour of our three-hour show. We're here with you t until 12. All sorts of stuff going on. We've got a new Song Wars coming up. We're in the midst of Text the Nation. We've got very exciting things to talk about. This has got to be one of the busiest uh, shopping weekends in the world, isn't it? Uh, like probably. In the, in the year, isn't it? Yeah, probably. People doing all that. So shopping. probably no one stuff. listening. Uh, probably no one listening. Mm. Also... Films like Christmas films just suddenly pop out without you noticing. Have you ever noticed that? Suddenly, you know, they'll just spring something on you. I mean, there's Jack Claus, Fred Claus. What Fred is it? Claus, yeah. They, they released that too early. Yeah. 
and it was supposed to be a bit of a stinker. That was around for a while, stinking up the area. Mm. Uh, there's Enchanted, which has come out. They've got Enchanted Lights in Oxford Street. Sponsored which, lights. Yeah, which is no good, man. That is totally well, uncalled for. can't afford for. to put them up unless they have a sponsor. Is that the case? Mm, I think so. Ah, uh, it's a shame. Yeah, no. it's supposed to be all right, though, that film. No, I don't believe No, you. it's supposed to be all right. It's done very well in the States, it's isn't it? It's done very well. But well I done. I mean, it just seems such a tired idea. Would you like your film well done? Carry on talking. Um, oh, I was just thinking about it. It's delicious. Mm. Mm. You know, I'd like it a little bit rare. But the most gaudy and frightful-looking Christmas film that's popped out is has got to be Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporiums, <laughs> which is directed by the guy that wrote uh, a Will Ferrell film called Stranger Than Fiction. Oh, yeah. Which was a very big noise. The, the screenwriter was fated as, as a brilliant new um, talent. Mm. Uh, did you see Stranger Than Fiction? I did see it, yes. Partly because, um, Britt Daniel from Spoon, one of my favourite bands, provided a lot of the music. Well, is that true? Yeah. What did you think of it? Uh, well, I loved the music. Mm. Um, I didn't hate the film, but it was ve it was on the verge of being very irritating. Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporium has got the most gaudy poster I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? It's like, it's a little, it reminds me, the, it's the same colour scheme as Vomit. As Vomit and the Tim Allen, um... Tim Allen's Vomit. Picture, what's the one that, he was in Santa Claus. You, is it? The Santa Claus. In my mind, I've got, uh, I've got someone dressed as Santa, uh, strung up in a string of lights. Yeah, sure, there's no, uh, that's National Lampoon's National Christmas, right, right, Christmas, right. Christmas. But no, you uh, there's no Santa in Mr. Majorne's Wandering Poor, I, I don't think, but it is a terrible title, isn't it? It's got Dustin It might Hoffman. be brilliant, and Natalie Port Portable Man. Yeah. And, uh, it's got, it's a terrible title, Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporium. Well, it certainly sounds as if he thought of the, uh, Emporium before the Majorium. Yeah, we were thinking you could have, uh, Mrs. Gleesop's Tea Shops. <laughs> you know, it's not difficult, is it? Uh, I like Tommy uh, Roper Roller's can of Coca-Cola. Mm. Mm. I like Ned Pop's cake uh, shops. Cake shops. <laughs> <laughs> is there, um, is there someone called Mr. Majorium? Is there, is there, has there ever been anyone called Mr. Majorium? I don't think so. I mean, th there's a spice called marjoram, isn't there? It doesn't bode well, does it, for the general writing level? No. No. But anyway, if you've seen that film, do, do tell us whether it's any good. What could it be about, though? It's about a magic toy shop, uh, run by Mr. Majorium. He's a very old kind of Willy Wonka type person who runs the toy shop. And the toy shop decides to close, it goes out of business, but the toys come to life in order to keep it open. Wow. A little bit like A Night at the Museum. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, it might be amazing. I'd love to, uh, find out. <laughs> yeah. Certainly. Um, now listen, we're going to play a bit more music right now, and then we are going to unveil our new Christmas Song Wars songs for you listeners. So that'll be exciting, won't it? Here's the Decemberists before we do, though. <laughs> The Decemberists with Ovalencia. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for... It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of proms. So check it out. Yes, sir. It's time to launch this week's Song Wars. Um, we apologise if if you feel that this feature is kind of spreading across the show like an ugly audio rash there's nothing we can do it's out of control it's like a gi a giant moose well this is going to be the last song wars for a few weeks it's That's taking, true actually it's taking a christmas break um and uh, it will be back in the new year yeah. refreshed revitalized and a little bit fatter so this week's theme is christmas songs of course uh, christmas is a time when everybody and their uncle tries to cash in on the Christmas single buying frenzy that doesn't really exist. And we've never done a Christmas song before. That seems amazing to me that two such jaded, cynical tools as us would have passed up the uh, opportunity to do a, a Christmas mm. single. However, know? Garage Band isn't very rich on Christmas sounds, is it? There's Not no really. sleigh bells. No. So which what, what direction have you gone? Uh, I've gone in a kind of a, I don't really know, <laughs> an odd direction, a, a panicked and desperate 4.30pm yesterday kind of a direction. I've gone on a little kind of narrative. Uh, you tell me. Okay. Well, listen, I went first last week. Um, do you want to go first? No, no, I, I went second you last went week. Second, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't mind going yeah. first. Would you prefer? Sure, go first. Do okay. it. Uh, I went in a sort of... Uh, hey, sorry, can yeah. I just explain to listeners who might be new to the show, we're going to play you two songs. One of them's uh, uh, written by Adam and recorded by Adam. One of them's written and recorded by me. We just do them at home on our on our computers on GarageBand. Um, and we'd like you to text to vote for the one you think is the best. You can text 64046 or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. It's a bit like X Factor, only it doesn't really cost you anything. 
um to text in and the it? music's a lot I mean, better we don't know really but certainly nobody's getting fat <laughs> off the profits um and so yeah that's it and you could just text adam or joe just the word adam or joe or if you want to text some logic or or some passionate thoughts about the songs then we love that as well um so here's my christmas song this is a kind of country christmas song in fact it's called christmas country party time and <laughs> at first i went in quite a sincere direction with it uh, and then I listened back to it all, and I just thought, I can't, that's no good. So in, I just went demented instead. See what you think. Well, it's Christmas in the country, and I'm turning off the gas. I'm putting stickers on my face and painting on my legs. We're going to have a party, and I am so excited. There's going to be some parsley, and everyone's invited. Those people in the city have forgotten what Christmas means. But out here in the countryside, we know what Christmas means. Ooh, Christmas country party time, Christmas party time. Christmas, 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 Christmas party time. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time, Germany party time. Christmas, Christmas country, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas bills. Party, party, Christmas time, Christmas country time. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time, Germany or Christmas time. go that's uh adam's version of it, the adam's christmas song uh and it's called uh was it christmas country party time there you go now uh joe <laughs> what are you doing why are you not speaking i'm speechless <laughs> i thought i'd gloss over it and move on <laughs> i feel like i've just been mugged <laughs> sexually assaulted but in a fun parsley way. Painted legs, yeah. stickers on face, germaline, bills, Gina G, light bulbs, Sigourney Weaver, Richard Gere, and a Rubik's Cube. It's all the modern Christmas experience. <laughs> I suppose there is that, I mean, wow. But that d that did have a certain something in that, you know, Christmas is sort of uh, meaningless in a way if you're not particularly religious, and it just turns into a sort of festival of random pop cultural nonsense. Yeah, that's the subtext. So that was unifying <laughs> some of those things, but random pop cultural nonsense that's the subject so that was unifying some of those things but germaline germaline just now it's just what germ germ it's it's an antiseptic if you Is cut it? yourself putting up the tree if you get needles in under your nails right you might want to pop a bit of germaline on there that's all that was do you think saying. we should have some proper music and then hear mine maybe that's an idea yeah maybe we could sort of separate them out i just think the air needs to be cleared <laughs> <laughs> i think we need to call pest control <laughs> get the studio fum fumigated it's toe tapping though come on it's you good man i really like that um that uh, there were some hose that were down yeah 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 okay then now this is it we're gonna mellow things out a little bit right now this hey, is my one my one's coming up though listeners yeah 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 after this we're going to hear joe's christmas song but this is from one of my favorite van morrison albums and uh it's what's the album called oh yeah it's called veden fleece one of his lesser known ones but i read once somewhere that it's sinead o'connor's favorite van morrison album that's just a little sinead o'connor fact <laughs> for you but uh i hope you enjoy it. it's a really lovely tune it's called fair play that's Van Morrison with Fair Play. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. That's lovely, isn't it? He sings their tit for tat. That's not a fair deal, is it? I mean, unless it's a low quality tit. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. a bit of tat. You shouldn't get into tit for tat. That's no good. No, no, no. Eye, no. For, eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, etc. Well, it's the world's oldest profession, exchanging some tat for, for a tit. For a little bit of tit. Yeah. It's nice. Nice. 
Okay, it's time for my, um, Ben, is that all right? <laughs> we haven't crossed the line by saying no. <laughs> uh, we're talking about birds, yeah. blue tits. Um, it's time for my Song Wars song. We had to play a proper song there just to clear the air. It's a new kind of, um, tactic. I'm not saying that your song was in any way bad, Adam. Yes, you are. I'm not at all. You said it was stinky and it stink and stank up the place. I didn't say that. It's just, it was strong. <laughs> like cheese, a really strong, mmm, delicious cheese. You're gonna have to hear it again before the end of the show. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if mine's gonna improve the situation. Uh, my one is, is called All Night Garage, and it's about kind of, you know, someone who hasn't really focused on their Christmas duties uh, until the last minute. And, you know, last week Adam pr produced a superb song about the hours. I was intimidated by his use of samples, mm. so uh, I decided to try and raise my game, and I've put some sound effects in here, so it's a, it's a bit of a narrative, but don't get worried, it's not very long. Uh, so this is uh, Joe Song, Joe Song for Thong Wars. Uh, it's called All Night Garage. Here it is. What? Oh no! It's nine o'clock on Christmas Eve and I ain't bought no presents yet. What am I gonna do? I'll have to go down the all-night garage. All-night garage, all-night garage, Christmas shopping at the all-night garage. All-night garage, all-night garage, Christmas shopping at the all-night garage. All-night garage, all-night garage, Christmas shopping at the all-night garage. All-night garage, all-night garage, Christmas shopping at the all-night garage. Hello there, mate. How are you doing? I gotta buy some stuff and my Christmas will be ruined. Beginning to rain and on Christmas Day she can't complain. All night garage, all night garage, Christmas shopping at the all night garage, all night garage, all night garage, Christmas shopping at the all night garage. Christmas shopping at the all night garage, all night garage, all night garage, Christmas shopping at the all night garage. Listen mate, I've got to go, oh, yeah. I've got everything on my, my stride. Yeah, sorry girl, the machine's gone down, but there's a cash machine if you drive into town. At times like this I can't help but feel I wish Santa Claus was really real. I asked myself, what would Jesus do? Perhaps he'd give his dad an old bottle of booze from the cupboard. Forget the windscreen wipers, mate. 50 on the dot, then. Merry Christmas. Christmas shopping at the all night garage, all night garage, all night garage, Christmas shopping at the all night garage. Joe, what's this you got me? Delta Force 2 and a cigarette lighter. Oh, thank you, you shouldn't have. Oh, that's your old mum there at the end. That's my Auntie Doris, <laughs> who just happens to rhyme with Chuck Norris. <laughs> there we go. So that's my song this week. That's called All Night Garage. Um, do send your votes. Text your votes to 64046 or email them to adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. And the winner will be unveiled, uh, as far as I know, I think on our sort of pre-New Year's Eve Saturday show. It's all getting a bit complicated. It's complicated because of Christmas and it messes all the schedules it messes up. it all up. We have to pre-record a couple of shows over the Christmas period, so our, our minds are scrambled as to the exact chronology. I don't think anyone's that worried. <laughs> no. Are we, are we going with Jay-Z next? Yeah, this is a song we seem to be playing regularly on the show, and it's no bad thing because it's really good. It's got a brilliant sample by some kind of marching band. Somebody sent us in uh, the name of the band the other week. Thank right. you for that, whoever that was. Uh, yeah, this is Jay-Z with Rock Boys. <laughs> What a frightful mess Jay-Z has made in the house. He's weed in the house, he's poured drinks on the house, and he's killed the ice. He's, he's, it's just chaos whenever Jay-Z comes. Don't we in the house? No, no, we on the house. We in the garden, at least. At least it'll go into the soil, but not on the furniture, Jay-Z. There's no excuse, yeah, is there? Control. You know, uh, rap is one of the only parts of the music industry that seems to be flourishing financially, like... <laughs> financially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, really? I mean, I mean Jay-Z is one of the most... Uh, wealthy men in the world now. Sure, sure. And but remain... word on the street, Adam, yeah. is that that rap is kind of, uh, you know, losing lo losing its way. But I heard that that uh, sales of rap music accounted for something like twenty three, twenty five percent of That's all. That's been the... the case for a while, though, hasn't it? Right. I remember when people thought rap wouldn't last. 
Exactly. It was like when a I fad. was listening to it in the late eighties. Well, Kenny Everett did his kind of it was sixth a fad. Rap. Yeah, exactly. Rap. And that was uh, taking how wrong they were how and how wrong. right I was. Yeah, you're right about yeah. everything, Joe. That Joe Cornish. Cornish. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Do you mean what was that? What was that? Uh, no, not really. Oh. I mean, you're right about most things. Yeah. Um, uh, what was that email that we got about, uh, Mr. Majorium's, uh... Yes, we've had some very good suggestions come in for other, um, titles that are similar to Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporium. Uh, this came in from Aidan. He says, Dr. Harkett's Supermarkets. <laughs> 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 it's weird, because they're probably quite easy to think of, but still strangely rewarding. Yeah. Mrs. Mahaffa... Mrs. Mahaffey... And her magical cafe. No, I've read that wrongly. Mahaffey. Mrs. Mahaffey and her magical cafe. That's a good one. Or Marcel Tootpop and his enchanted fruit, enchanted fruit shop. <laughs> that's good. I thought of Chewy Tell Edgio Four's wonderful acting store. Uh, that's quite good, but you, that only rhymes with the second bit of his name. The, say what? it again. Chewy Tell Edgio Four's wonderful acting store. Is that no good? Mm, I'm not sure. The thing about Majorium and Emporium. Merge or is, is all of you know it hits all the vowels in a really uh, convoluted way doesn't it so i don't mean to do you down well i've got <laughs> if I've we're also, gonna do this let's do it properly how about this then janine mcfarla's lady parlor that's that uh, i don't know i'm not sure you're as good a writer uh, as i can't <laughs> do it says <laughs> zach helm oh, look no. here's how to do it here's one from simon mrs mcnesson's delicatessen what's wrong with janine <laughs> mcfarla's lady parlor then well it's quite good <laughs> Did you, hear, did you hear that? What? I went... <laughs> yeah, that's like a disgruntled horse. Um, now, you've got a, a music choice coming Yeah, up. this is one of my favourite reggae artists of all time, and he's uh, turned the dreadful Sting song, um, and uh, what's it called in New York? Englishman in New York. What do you mean, in dreadful? New York. Oh, come on, it's no good. He's made it good. Shinehead's made it good. Here it is. This is called a Jamaican in New York. <laughs> Just left big gaps there, Shinehead. Mm, it was a bass gap. If if you've got really like pumping bass, that would be right. rattling your jing jongs. Oh, my little jing jong. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Um, news from the Song Wars Vote Collating Centre. <laughs> uh, we're not giving you any definitive scores, but I think it's going to be really close. Is it? Yeah, I think it's dividing people. Well, there was a lot to be said for both of those songs, or maybe a lot to be said about yeah, both of those Yeah, I think there songs. was the same amount of not much, probably. Maybe. To be said. So do get your votes in, because this week they could really count. It's very important this it's week. It's really important that you vote. Because all the money Imagine we the raise... consequences if, if they didn't. All the money we raise goes to charity. Mm, none. <laughs> none money. Um, and anyway, we'll be reminding you of those songs later on in the show, and that's a promise... Um, but before that, more music, and before that, the news, read by Joe Cornish, Eric Fisher, and Ruth Barnes. Thank Not you. On digital radio. Bonk. Bonk. That's The Cure, of course, with, uh, Love Cats. <coughs> hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Here's an email that's come in from Chris. Chris, this is a good email. Good morning, gents. I think what makes Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporium and Dr. Harkett's Supermarket work, where Adam's suggestions enjoyed only a strange sort of success, <laughs> is the number of syllables. Mr. Majorium's has six syllables, as does Wonder Emporium, balancing that title out nicely. And Dr. Harkett's Supermarket has eight syllables in total, four to each part. It seems to me that Adam's were oddly weighted, which might have accounted for Joe's slightly frigid reactions. <laughs> I'm aware how strange this email is. Enjoying the show very much, Chris. That's true, Chris. Absolutely. See, uh, he's supporting what I said. Valid points. Once there. again, I'm right. All right, don't rub it in my face like that, like some kind of face hey, cream. If I can't rub that in your face, what can I rub in your face? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like a little bit of Nivea. Really? Would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Could bring you out in spots. I'm not sure about Nivea though. It leaves. It, it, it makes you look a little bit greasy for about five minutes afterwards. Later on today, Joe Cornish. Mm. Exciting news from my world. I'm going to uh, the theatre. With, Ooh. with my uh, children. That's unusual, isn't it? Oh, so not proper theatre. Not the proper theatre, by no means. I'm hoping that the fact that it's for children, we're going to see Tintin, so I'm quite excited. Oh, that's supposed to be a good production. It's Where's it on? Wickle Wockles. Um, we are... Oh, where is it on? Somewhere. You don't know, do you know? No. Oh, the theatre. It's on somewhere... I tell you, the, the only theater. weird thing about Tintin is it's one of those parts that when it's played by someone too old, mm -hmm. just... It's weird. In fact, it's one of those parts, a bit like Asterix and Oblix, that when it's translated from the drawn to the to the real, it goes odd. Now, of course, Spielberg and Peter Jackson are collaborating on a 
on a, a live action version of Tintin. Are they? There were several French live action Tintin films. I think there's three of them, a couple of them big screen and one of them for uh, for TV. What look about this knowledge? What about this knowledge? That's very impressive. Yeah, and uh, I remember seeing them on TV. You can't get them on British DVD, but you can get them on import if you parlez français, you mm. uh, can understand them. Yes. Uh, but they've got a kind of a weird man. You can't tell how old he is. Looks a bit like Jimmy Somerville prancing around in little trousers with a dog and it's it's just a bit weird you know tintin makes sense in the context of a comic book mm. but were you to meet him in the real world you'd think you're a lesbian well it's like homer simpson as well you don't want to see a live action simpsons particularly i mean it was well, there, what, well there was that like wasn't there that uh, that that trail that that sky trail that uh, had the like the simpsons in live action there was yeah, over yeah. A, a lot, i think it was last christmas in fact this time last year it was all the rage on the internet that's right but i i know what you mean it is slightly grotesque the one place where that really worked was in south park where they didn't have live action but they had uh, sort of photorealistic pencil drawings of the of the south park kids in right. one of the episodes uh when cartman or someone was going door to door trying to track them down or someone was going door to door trying to track them down that was brilliant yeah 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 that really really worked but yeah and asterix and Oblix as well the live action version who is it it's um, it's Depardieu Depardieu, it? as uh, maybe that works a little bit better actually you would think so because he's sort of cartoonish yeah but i remember as a kid whenever i saw uh a live action version of those cartoons it would weird me out mm. it would be very odd like freakish like the uh, robert altman popeye exactly it, yeah. it just shouldn't really it just doesn't make sense on Blows a, a fundamental mind. level yeah you can't make the transition well it's like well because you have to fill in all the gaps don't you what if, if they're really real then you mean every every single detail actually exists yeah in a world it's it's creepy I know, especially with someone like Popeye, you want to see his arms popping Popples. up. And of course, uh, with Popples, they did give Robin Williams quite impressive. They did muscles. And there. actually, it's quite a cool movie to uh, to to watch now. It's quite odd and weird. Yeah, it's a real extravaganza, isn't yeah, it? Of nuttiness. But I'm hoping, I'm slightly hoping Tintin's going to be quite short. Because the thing with a lot of children's things, especially Pantos, I've noticed. I went to the Panto last year in uh, Norwich, and um, oh my gosh, it went on for about ten years. Did the I kids was, get bored? They got pretty bored, but they had all sorts of tactics to keep the kids alive and mainly selling them things. People coming round in the numerous intervals with sort of tactics. Light them ones. They weren't. It was mainly not to do with Tic Tacs. No, it was nothing to do with Tic Tac tactics. It was uh, they were selling them sort of glow sticks and light ones and things that span round. And of course, span spun round. Uh, all the children wanted them, you know, so you had to buy them, otherwise you were going to have a nightmare situation on your hands. Yeah. But I was getting to the, you know, I was thinking, boy, this has been going a long time, Cinderella, and suddenly that carriage turned up, and I was thinking, ah, there we go, that's the end. It was the interval! No. And there was a whole <laughs> other hour to go of more Cinderella. She does go on, that Cinderella. Oh, my on Lord. On and on and on. She reads Heat magazine and watches Big Brother and will not shut up about so it. So my fingers are crossed for, what do you reckon, less than an hour, certainly less than an less hour Less than half, a day. I'm hoping. Oh, I'd imagine that's a, that's a sort of class production, Tintin. You reckon, yeah. yeah. Oh, I look forward to hearing how good that is. Mr. California Cop's Enchanted Electronics Shop? Mr. California Cop. That's a funny That's name. almost as far-fetched as Majorium. Yeah, California Cop's a good uh, name for a show anyway. California Cop. They're just filthy. He's a filthy cop. It's yeah, like they a filthy, cop a filthy version of chips. Uh, okay, more music. Here is Jack Pignati for you with Have I Been a Fool? <laughs> There you go, Susie and the Banshees with Hong Kong Garden. That sounds very good, doesn't it, these days? I mean, you know, it hasn't dated badly in the... Are you list. referring to... Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if you're a Susie Sue fan, then tune in on Christmas Day when she will be taking over the Six Music Airways from 9pm with her own peculiar brand of sort of uh, irascible um, punk fun. Did you... You're uh, not someone who reads the music papers, are you, Joe? So you wouldn't have read... No, the... what are the music? You mean the NME? Well, and... Uh, Is I, there more than one? I, I, not just music papers, but music publications. Oh, right. Like Q and Mojo and that yeah, sort of exactly. business. Yeah, exactly. She did no, an interview don't. in Mojo where she got absolutely furious and walked out. Really? And had a real clash with the what, guy. What, what went wrong? What was the turning point? Well, the thing is that Susie Sue was one of the earliest punks on the scene. She's mm. there in the, on the Bill Grundy show when the Sex Pistols were on yeah, there. Yeah, proto-punk. Swearing away. And in those days, as a young, naive... Um, girl who didn't know any better and was just trying to be in your face she was one of these people who used to wear a swastika on her arm mm -hmm. you know the punks adopted the swastika as just something to enrage the oldies you know mm -hmm. they didn't mm -hmm. so they weren't so much doing it didn't as a, think it through just doing it as a kind of exactly uh, yeah uh not they weren't being uh, anti-semitic so much as just wanting to put two fingers up to everyone and, and say yeah deal with this granddad 
But of course, it's something that she gets reminded of very often. You know, people saying, "What's the mm. deal with the swastika?" And she's like, uh, "Do I have to explain this again? I'm not anti-Semitic. Please don't rake up the whole swastika thing." And so, of course, it was raked up once again by Mojo, and she just Mojo. Uh, she flipped her wig out and, and, and exited. I love a good walkout in an interview. It's good, isn't it's it? It's the hallmark of a good interview. It's enjoyable. Just to leave. I think you can find that interview on the internet. It's uh, it's a good read. We should do uh, a series of interviews where the entire aim is to make the person walk out. Yeah. What's what's the, you think? What's your favourite walkout from an interview ever? Uh, I'm a big fan of. Uh, is it Keith Allen on that late night TV? I mean, the TV ones are best because they've always got the microphone attached. That's right. And you can't just walk out. You've got a piece of wire attached to you, and you've got to get the microphone off, and you know you've got to do a bit of <laughs> bumbling and fluffing before you can actually leave. And that's the best bit. <laughs> Uh, trying to think of what to say when you've decided to leave, but still have to loiter. Because they always tuck the mic right up under they your do. shirt and everything. You've got to like. You can't it. make the swift dramatic exit. There's all those <laughs> fiddling. To, My favourite one is uh, the Bee Gees on Clive Anderson. That is a good one. Do yeah. they have microphone problems? Uh, no, I don't think they do. Maybe they just walk out. That's the, walk out with the mics. Maybe they got radio mics. I'm trying to think. Uh, no, may maybe one of them, because one of them is left behind. The other two march off, right. and one of them is sat there, sort of fiddling with his mic. And there's an awkward silence. And Clive Anderson looks uh, very, sort of, genuinely flummoxed. He never and really upset. recovered from that. He was, he used to be brilliant on TV, and he's still he on was. the radio, and he never really recovered. He's never having a comeback now. Like, he's on QI regularly, and he's always good. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah he's brilliant. He's good, man. Um, right now, we're going to uh, we're going to recap on some um, text stuff from text the nation uh lies that people have told you better have some more music and the first, unpleasant though, consequences eh? yes but here's a track that i picked for you listeners this is just a very short thing and it's from gil scott heron it's almost just like a poem that he's doing and as far as i can tell it's a it's a piece it's a sort of anti-extremism piece and this in this case extremism within the black community we'll see about that it's called brother well, it's a complicated business being uh, friends with Gil Scott Heron. Yeah, it's tough. There's a lot of things that you can go wrong on. Uh, uh, darling, uh, Gil Scott Heron's coming around <laughs> for dinner on uh, Saturday. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, he's very difficult. He's very prickly. <laughs> he keeps going on about what one has to do to be black in a very particular way. And I never feel I satisfy his criteria. I don't understand his criteria. <laughs> Plus, I'm trying to study for my BA, my black ass. <laughs> And it, I don't know, he's getting in the way. <laughs> it was Gil Scott Heron with Brother. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Have you got any uh, text the nation? Yeah, we should there? have a jingle though, shouldn't we too, Ben? Yeah, let's get Come back on. in there. Do a jingle, do a text the nation jingle. Quickly, 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 quickly. This is your test, man. Testing Ben's do it to the limits. It's punctuation. When are we going to make Come on. the... Oh, here we go. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. There we go, it's Text the Nation, the nation's favourite feature as voted for by readers of the Radio Times magazine, Chat magazine, Heat magazine, and Now magazine. Not true. Uh, this, <laughs> this week's subject is um, lies, terrible, stupid, stupid lies you've told. Uh, here are some. Jem in Edinburgh says, I tell so many lies every day, I find it difficult to remember what's true. My favourite was... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a problem I have. My favourite was when I said I was a roadie for a band to seem cool. Stupid people still believe it. How could I be? I'm tiny and a girl. Ha ha, I love lying. <laughs> <laughs> Some people approach lying as a sort of life policy, because at a certain age you do kind of think, uh, well, who's ever going to follow it up? Right. You know, what will the consequences be? And there's a certain type of lie when there are no consequences. The only consequence would be someone thinking, uh, that person's a tiny bit sad. Mm. And you can put up with that. It's all right for people you're not really interested in to think you're sad. You know what? I've got out of the habit of lying. Well, as you get older, you realise that actually th there's a kind of a karma thing. Yeah. And kind uh, of might I might bite you on your BA. Yeah. <laughs> I find it almost impossible to lie now. And it's it's almost become a problem. Well, that's a lie, isn't it? No, Come it on. is. It's is true. It? Yeah, because I've got in trouble so many times with people asking me questions outright. And I just... <laughs> You've I... lied about, uh, well, you've lied about when you're going away. What do you mean? Over Christmas, haven't That's you? not true. No, I'm aware. Sure? I'm out of London. I'm not able really? to do the show. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, I still <laughs> think you're lying. It's going to take me a while to get over your okay. history of lies. Um, here's another one from... Now, this is weird because it's all over the shop. Oh, gosh. Um, I created an elaborate lie to tell my sister when she was about seven and I was 11. I told her that the family cat and I could get inside the TV by jumping head first at the screen and hitting the remote. 
That's very dangerous. The cat and I would have all sorts of adventures in TV land before <laughs> she got up in the morning. It was only recently I got her to admit. What? She tried to do it when I wasn't there, bumping her poor little head against the TV screen. We're now 21 and 26 from Matt in Lancaster. Wow. That's quite a ir an irresponsible lie. It's a little bit irresponsible. But it's a good one. Wouldn't that be brilliant? The thing that really makes that lie is, is that you do it with the cat. I know. So that's... you've got an animal sidekick, and that makes things more magical. Well, it's a nice idea for a TV show, a bit like Jamie and the Magic Torch. It's a bit like Charlie Brooker's The Magic Noose idea, though, isn't it? Do you remember that? in no, in that? In, uh, in, what was his website called? TV, um... Go Home. Go Home, yeah. He was just doing scurrilous, appalling, wrong children's TV shows, and he had one called The Magic Noose, <laughs> <laughs> where kids... This is terrible for Saturday morning, isn't it? We can't go into it. But it I'm was thinking a kind of, of a late night type of a website. Call it, you call it The Cat and I. Uh -huh. And, uh, it just, you know, they go in telly and they have adventures in their telly. Yeah, that's what he was on about. That's what I'm saying. But you've given nice it a title. Like the Cat and I. The Cat and I. A good one. <laughs> Hi, lads. I once told a girl that I owned the town in which we lived. We stayed together for three years. <laughs> Clackus from Cramlington. He's, he said when he's written like we stayed together for three years he's written the number four and then three years so it could be we stayed together 43, 43 years 43 years hard to tell there from clackers on a lie <laughs> here's an anonymous one understandably anonymous i stole my two-fingered woodwork teacher's car badge and let's deal with that first of all his woodwork teacher's got two fingers does that make you a good woodwork teacher <laughs> no. or a bad woodwork makes teacher you a woodwork teacher with stories to tell it's like et <laughs> <laughs> he's like one of the mutants from um um, total Recall. I'm not hey. saying. That, I'm not saying that people. Oh, 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 oh. People who've saw their fingers are fine. mutants. I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A voluntary mutant. It was probably an accident. He's a woodwork teacher. He slipped. Of course, that's what I'm saying. You said voluntary mutant, and now you've made it all sound creepy. I was trying oh, to get out. Oh, it's my fault. Creepy hole. I stole my two-fingered woodwork teacher's car badge. I got caught and told the head teacher that the school bully said. I had to do it, or he would beat up all of my friends. <laughs> I played the Samaritan Dilemma card, and it worked. The bully had to buy a new Vauxhall Cavalier badge for 14 quid, but he made my life a living hell for the rest of the year. I think it confirmed the bully's fears that the world was against him. Last time I heard of him, he was in jail. <laughs> oh, the joys of growing up in Coventry. <laughs> there you go. I Keep them coming in. What? Nothing. I was going to say I went to university in Coventry, and then and then I just realised that it was the most boring <laughs> fact that I could come out with. Keep those stupid lies coming in. Text six four zero four six or email uh, Adam and Joe uh, dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Tar very much. Thanks. Bye. Here's the Foo Fighters. BBC six, 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 six music, 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 music on digital online. BBC six music. It's good, isn't it? Then that's the new Foo Fighters jingle. <laughs> They're really pleased with it. Um, no, it wasn't the Foo Fighters. That was the, the we call it the top of our. Do we call that the sweep? It's the top of our sweeper. The top of our sweeper. Did you like the top of our sweeper? Right now, here's some music. This is Faith No More. Good Lord. It's a dirty song, but someone's got to sing it. That was Faith No More singing that dirty song. That was, uh, I went and bought that single. I was excited when that came out. I thought, this is the future of rock and roll! You were wrong. And it's a, it's a mixture of insane, banging techno beats and, um, heavy metal guitar riffs. And this is where music is going now in the future. Uh, and it had all the uh, riff, you know, all the references to all the exciting All the references. References. Um, there was references to Transformers there. Which of course, were there? Yeah, oh, very prescient. Have now uh, come back in style again. Although the Garbage Pail Kids, which were also referred to in there, oh, they're due for a comeback, surely. You reckon? Yeah, Cabbage Patch Dolls and the and, and the Garbage Pail Kids. They'll get round to them sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah, Cabbage Patch Dolls. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that was Faith No More. Um, now books. Yes. Do you like books, book, Adam? Book news. Love books. Do you really? What was the last book you read? Uh, well, do you know what I told you the other day? Oh I, yeah, yeah. I went, you read Mrs. Dalloway. I'm reading Mrs. Dalloway. Ah. And, and do you know what I was talking? We were talking about Paul Auster the other day, and mm. I am, I was embarrassed to admit that I'd never even heard of him. Did you get the New York trilogy? Uh, no, I got, I can't remember which one I got. I got another one that had lots of stars all over it from various mm. m newspapers. Well, if it's no good, take it back and buy it, the New York Trilogy, because that's a, the key text. A husband, he's grieving for his family who've been killed in an air crash or something grim like that. Sounds it? like a bummer. Uh, re rehabilitates <coughs> himself. It does sound like a bit of a bummer. What have you got there? I've got a very, very, very good book that I wanted to recommend to, to listeners who like spooky things. Ooh. I love a good ghost story. 
and the supernatural i don't believe in any of it but i can't stop reading about it right i love it i'm like um scoldy moldy or from the x-files right scoldy moldy <laughs> yeah. uh, i want to believe yeah um because when i was little i was brought up uh you know my parents and grandparents used to tell nothing but ghost stories and ufo stories and stuff i believed it all mm. now i don't uh but i just love reading about it and i picked up this book uh called will store versus the supernatural it's not a new book uh, this isn't some kind of awful PR plugging session type thing. Mm. I think it's a couple of years old, uh, but it's by this guy, Will Storr. If you lacked imagination, you'd say he was a Louis Theroux, John Ronson type investigative humorist. Uh, it's got a quote by John Ronson on the on the cover. He, there's a picture. Is that Will Storr on the front? He there? wasn't happy with the cover. Yeah, he looks like a kind of cadaverous uh, hey. Louis Theroux. Yeah, no, he looks like a very handsome Louis Theroux. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, he's done a thing that I always thought would be a good idea. He's just basically set out to try and find... He's dedicated, like, a couple of years of his life to try and find any evidence whatsoever of ghosts, the supernatural, or any kind of afterlife. Mm. The tiniest, tiniest inkling of any kind of reality. And is that him setting out as a sceptic at the beginning? Uh, he, yeah, he's a sceptic, but he's also open-minded. He's from quite a... His parents are quite spiritual, mm -hmm. and it pivots around when he was at a dinner party with his mum. Uh, his mum says something along the lines of, you know, uh, we're a very spiritual family. And he goes, I'm not. And she goes, oh, you will be. <laughs> And that's always sort of uh, prickled him. Right. So he decides to go, and, and he does everything from go uh, on a night with Most Haunted, mm -hmm. uh, go behind the scenes, and that's quite an interesting chapter. He does uh, Naughty Seances. Who is seances. the host of Most Haunted again? Uh, Yvette Fielding oh, okay. and Derek Akora. Derek Akora. They still are, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd like to reiterate, uh, you know, obviously that programme's a stupid charade, but also quite fun. Yeah. It's more indicative of how powerful night vision is and handheld cameras are as a kind of, uh, you know, present presentational device than it is of any kind of... And also how powerful smoking lots of silk cuts and having a weird <laughs> hair is. Mostly ghostly, my friend. Yeah, Doug mostly ghostly, that's right. That's Kelly calls it that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant book, and it gen genuinely kind of scared me. It talks a lot about the Enfield poltergeist, and he goes and stays in an amazingly haunted pub. And when I read it, I thought to myself, well, I'm a complete sceptic, but would I do... Would I be scared? If I went, he goes to stay in, in some pub that is a kind of old smuggling pub, mm. and it has a bedroom called Annie's Room, and the owners seem very sceptical, and they go, oh, you can sleep in there if you want, but you won't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, as soon as the door closes, you'll come out. Yes, there's a, a dark figure that emerges from the wall. You'll hear ghostly cackling, things will touch you, and no, you, so, so we've done the other room. We've done the bed in the other room ready for you. You know, if you're in that situation for some kind of documentary, do you think you'd get freaked out? No. You I don't? Just, you think you're confident that you would just be completely cool? I think I would. I feel you'd as just if sleep I would. At sleep. Well, he kind of thinks that. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then someone comes in and... Well, he hears him. breathing. Uh -huh. He hears weird breathing coming from the, um, the chair next to the bed. Right. When he turns the lights out. Coming from the chair? Yeah, it's a living chair. Yeah. Ooh, I'm a dead... Chair. I'm Charlie the chair, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm dead. I'm a dead chair. Go on. What? What's going to happen to the man? He runs out of the room because he's frightened. Does he? But it's such a good book. It was so gripping, and not only that, he talks to um, like uh, uh, exorcists, and he talks to um, philosophers, and he talks to men who understand all the bits of their brain. So, and, and, and so he goes on a journey of sorts. It's not a total... Yeah, he talks to physicists about, right. about the areas of the brain that might conjure up these kind of... So he, he, he investigates it as if it's an illusory kind of, um, you know, psychosomatic phenomenon rather Man, than a real phenomenon. I would love to have a little bit of ghost action. I really I'm always so envious. I. I was uh, staying with some friends a couple of weekends ago, and in the morning they came down and they said, uh, we had a very bad night. You know, we didn't sleep at all well. There was... Um, I woke up and there was again like this guy breathing sounds they heard really? right above them they reckoned and uh what else did they say you assume that I, I would assume that was just my own breathing yeah and my brain half asleep well and exactly kind of... half asleep and i was thinking but still if if that happened in the context of loads of ghost stories and the expectation of a ghost it would still give me the the willies well it freaked them out but i just thought this is so easily Ben's explained willies explainable you laughing you know? at willies the way you said it oh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks you know it might be cars wish wishing past the window and echoing yeah. weirdly there's so many things that you could it's like occam's razor isn't it it's the the, the simplest <laughs> explanation <laughs> 
explanation is usually mm. uh, the right Absolutely. one. Why would you go for that ghost explanation? Because it's fun. Because it is fun, isn't it? And what's the name of the book again? It's called Will Store versus the Supernatural, uh, and it's published by uh, a book company called Ebury. Yeah, go. and it's really, really good. If you like that kind of thing, it's the best thing I've read in that kind of uh, area for for a long time. I'm I'm a I'm a subscriber to the Fortean Times. You love a little bit of spookiness. Love a bit of spookiness. Brilliant. Now here's the uh, the stars with the night starts here. That was uh, Stars with The Night Starts Here. It's the second track from their fourth album. Do you know anything about that, madam? Nothing. Nothing, no. no mm, sounded no. a bit inconsequential to me, but I may be wrong. It's me That's merely my opinion. Yeah, and for the sake of balance, I would like to say that that's my single of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well balanced. <laughs> a little too balanced. You put a bit too much weight on that scale. Popped it back the other way. Um, here's, uh, do you want to say anything, or should we just do another record? What's that? Record? Read out that thing about CSS? Uh, Someone was at a CSS gig last night. This is, uh... Uh, an email from Will Weaver. They're from Brazil, right? CSS? Uh, are they? Yeah, oh, well, I don't know. I saw CSS play in Brighton last night. There was a nice pre-Christmas festival atmosphere, but then the gig came to a grinding halt after somebody threw a shoe at Love Fox, the lead singer. It hit her square in the face. This sucked. They carried on until the end of the song without the singer, then that was it. The keyboard player said, Why would you throw a shoe at Love Fox? You ruined the whole flipping show. F oh, sorry, I changed my voice wrongly. I'll do that again. Why would you throw a shoe at Love Fox? You ruin the whole flipping show for everybody. Someone's going to have to either lie about throwing the shoe. Uh, I don't know. The, the email becomes confusing. But that's basically the, uh, the long and short of it. The lead singer got a shoe thrown at their face. That's terrible. And, and, and it sort of depends on the kind of shoe as well. I mean, there's some shoes that you mm. would rather have. Yeah, if it was a it. Nike Air Max, it'd be quite nice. That's quite nice. Cause it Softly would bounce off. It'd be wicked. And also you'd have like one quite wicked shoe. Yeah, you'd probably sell it 30 quid. Yeah, you could just hop around and yeah. people would think you were really cool. Exactly. If it was a football boot, that would be dreadful. That would be awful. And if it was a big kind of... Uh, ge ge generally, it's not a good thing to do, throw shoes at faces I why would you do that at a gig it's insane what behavior peculiar thing to do it's very i tell you what though there is a weird thing and i don't i don't know whether you get this in other countries but whenever you go to a gig there's always a very small percentage of the crowd who seem to be there not for the band right but just for the kind of just for uh, a ruck just for a ruck yeah they've kind of bought a ticket as if it's a as if it's a pub right do you yeah. know what i mean it's like they're, they're, they're and they talk during the songs and they just generally don't pay attention to the band and they're just looking for women or trouble or oh, they just know. want to get into a big hall full of people yeah and jump about it's oh, not God, so much the root those people out there should be a little quiz mm. before you buy a ticket for a concert where you have to ask a few basic question uh, answer a few basic questions about the band oh man there's a horrific scene in the wire the police series mm, where supposed um, to be great it's amazing where these two gangsters are going around they're trying to figure out uh which other gangsters happen to be from new york like central new york and they figure the best way to find out is to just ask them a question about the new york house music scene mm. so they asked this one guy like who recorded wiggly jiggly or whatever and this guy goes i don't know man how am i supposed to know who recorded wiggly jiggly bang straight gets it right really? in the head immediately it's horrific <laughs> but sort of interesting frightful business well and we're not suggesting that that happens at gigs no you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't execute the uh the people who didn't know the answers Absolutely to the questions, not. would you? Or would you, or would you, Adam? I think you might. Oh, maybe You're I, disgusting. Maybe I might. Maybe Here, that'll be my new policy in the new year. Here's a, re, uh, a free play. Uh, this is Roots Maneuver. He's a kind of a Kennington guy around where Adam and I live in, in London. Uh, this is a single from a few years ago with, I think, the best, one of the best videos. One of my favourite videos ever. If you check out this video on YouTube, if you haven't seen it, but the song in itself is amazing. And he's doing the six mix tonight from nine, which I'll be listening to. Uh, he's a genius. This is Roots Maneuver with uh, Witness the Fitness. Alan Williams, it was called uh, Will Store versus The Supernatural. You can go back to sleep now. That was Roots Maneuver with Witness the Fitness. Uh, he must have been so happy when he found those sounds, those little squelchy sounds. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. That's a, that's sonically. He uh, skills McBrills. That's what they call him in Scotland. Skilly McBrilly. Skilly, no McBrills. Skill McBrills. McBrills. Skilly McBrilly is what he's called in uh, somewhere else. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's deal with the rest of the text the nation lies. You are a very duplicitous and lilicious bunch. Mm. The listeners. Licentious. No, it's not licentious, is it? It's, no, licentious uh, is sort of dirty. Mendacious is the word. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, this is from Helen Williams. 
Morning, guys. I'm juggling drying my hair with listening to the show. I listen to the talky bits and dry during the music. Sexy. Anyway, I've got a bit of a ridiculous lie for you. When I was about 13, I went on a beach holiday, so I just imagined her, uh, and that she might be excited that we're reading it out. It never crossed my mind before. She's actually listening. She might be excited. Yeah. Hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. You look <laughs> lovely. You, is she still in the shower? You've missed a little bit what? at the back of the... Yeah. Just nape, nape of the neck. There we go. Anyway, I've got to... a bit of a... Ri- what? She, do you want me to dry it? That's okay. How would you do that? Oh, just blow. Actually, if you blew into a radio microphone, would a tiny gust of air come out of the speaker yeah. of the radio? It would, wouldn't it? Because it's to do with vibrations, isn't it? It might. Well, if you went, th- H- Howard Stern did that thing where he used to go boom, boom, boom. And oh, and ladies would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've got a bit of a ridiculous lie for you, says Helen. When I was about thirteen, I went on a beach holiday and met a guy who I had a little innocent holiday romance with. When I told one of my friends about him and she wanted some gory details, I decided to spice it up by telling her I'd had sex with him in a beach hut. <laughs> I never thought for a second she'd believe me. I'm actually a little offended that she didn't. That she did, to be honest. Anyway, it spiralled out of control, and she told all my friends, and a rumour went round every at uh, school that I was pregnant. Oh <laughs> Eventually, I had to tell the embarrassing truth. Everyone thought I was either pathetic or a hoa. <laughs> now that's a whole other kettle of fish, isn't it? Lying about sexual exploits. Sexual I mean, conquest. That's part of the everybody course. Everybody does it. Yeah. I, I remember when I was like nineteen or twenty, and I actually started doing things for real. Mm. I was a late starter. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't remember myself what was real or what wasn't. <laughs> I'd imagined sort of uh, sexual dalliances in such detail <laughs> that they'd imprinted themselves on my brain with the same power well, as real ones like had or hadn't. I still. <laughs> I still don't really know what was going on. <laughs> what was a dream and what was reality? Thank you, Helen. That's terrific. Triff. <laughs> uh, hi, Adam and Joe. This is from Becky. I once told my little sister that our mum had, had had a third grade... Well, oh, come on, start again, Cornish. I once told my little sister that our mum had had a third daughter, which she gave away before we were born, and I had found a note from her behind the cupboard. The note was written by me and stained with tea to look old. So oh she actually made goodness. this note. She believed me for five minutes before asking my mum, who told her it wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> I got the idea about making the old-looking letter from an Art Attack with Neil Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil, I wonder if Neil Buchanan said, and you can use this technique <laughs> to lie to your baby sister about the possibility of there being a sibling that was kidnapped by your mother and uh, put in an attic somewhere. Yes. Doubt it. Doubt it. Yeah. Neil Buchanan would uh, do something. And here's a sort of country one. Uh, this is from Peter Green. Is that the, the Peter Green? The Green Monster. The Green Monster. Thanks very much for all your uh, extremely lengthy Peter's communications. Peter's bombarding us with uh, emails. Here's another one. Don't get upset. He did another one about, about fish that was quite good I was going to read out, but I can't read out two. I was going to say, Pete, don't get upset if we don't read out your stuff. It's just because it's fairly lengthy. And, you oh, know, we've we got we to gotta spread the love. It takes us a while. I live in a to. quite rural area, consisting of country lanes, farmers, fields, woods and wildlife. As such, a herd of deer crossing the road is a familiar hazard for the local car driver. When my 18-year-old brother started driving, I felt it was my responsibility to tell him what to do if you run over a deer mm. uh, i explained that it's important that you don't try to move the deer by pulling the legs or the antlers you must only move it by putting your fingers in its ears and gently pulling <laughs> the story was ludicrous didn't imagine that he'd believe it however when his girlfriend telephoned him one day to say she'd found a dead deer lying in the road my brother imparted his knowledge to her sprang into action after after everyone our family had ever known had finished laughing about how a dead deer had been removed from the road by its ear holes by a young girl who knew no better to do <laughs> th- than to do what she was told, it emerged that the smell of dead deer earwax was still pungent on the poor girl's fingers two weeks later. Dead deer wax. Dead deer wax. There you go. Lots of lies. That's grotesque. Shocking business. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. But thank you very much indeed for... Oh, hang on. Here's, uh, here's one. Can, can I just do one more? And emailing. Yeah, let's do this and wrap... Is wrap that all right, Ben? You're looking upset. Um... We, we got a bit of, well, you, well, it's, it's ho- very, it's very quick. Chris Lote says, Dear Adam and Joe, morning, the worst lie I ever told was when I was at primary school for some reason. When I think about it now, I still don't know why I did it. I told some people in my class that my dad was dead. <laughs> <laughs> my mum then got other mums coming up to her after school offering their condolences and I got a big telling off. That's of course done by Antoine Duenel in Francois Truffaut's The 400 Blows, famously, and you know what? I did it to, I didn't say my parents were dead, but to get out of a history exam, I told, uh, Shirley Foster at school right. that a relative had died. Uh, a lot of people do that. Yeah, you know. it's a good one because there's no arguing with that. Absolutely not, but it do- it can bite you in the bottom if they can it? turn up. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> Here's T-Rex with Hot Love. 
That's uh, T-Rex there. That was recorded for the Radio 1 Club on the 9th of December, 1970. Wow, a long time ago. Sadam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Uh, it's uh, after just after 11 o'clock. 11.30, sorry, and it's time now for the news. Red. On digital radio and on... Jane's Addiction. Did you pick that one, Ben? No. Who picked you that one? You love Jane's Addiction, don't you? Some kind of, like... Uh, early 90s goth has programmed the show this morning you know we're, we're soft early 80s pop boys we just want to hear early we 80s like a bit of flavor oh, we want some softness some patheticness and that kind of music just frightens me and joe uh for the sake of balance i loved it <laughs> oh it was brilliant <laughs> nicely balanced uh this is adam and joe on bbc six music now uh when i'm working in my office uh recently listeners and adam i've noticed uh ladybirds oh yeah uh crawling with uh, increasing frequency across the wall. Even in the winter? Yeah, 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 especially in the winter. Now that it's turned cold, little ladybirds. Uh, at first I thought they were cute, and then somebody told me that Britain is being invaded by a species of ladybird called the harlequin ladybird. They were introduced uh, in America in, I don't know, like 10, 15 years ago, as a, a, a kind of uh, way to control aphids, mm -hmm. but they're too strong. They've wiped out all other breeds of uh, ladybirds, and they're becoming a plague. They, okay. they were introduced in Europe in something like uh, 2004, <clears throat> they've started to spread you go on the internet you can see maps of britain where people have reported sightings of them they've spread like a plague from the from the bottom right hand corner of britain all across climbing up britain if you live in scotland or you know the north wales yeah. uh, they're approaching anyway so i'd only got like three or four in my office so i was thinking oh better keep an eye out for these guys uh and, and ladybirds they're usually beautiful things yeah uh so one doesn't swat them or kill them or, or do anything bad. So I, I, I was very carefully uh, putting them under glasses, sliding a postcard under and popping it out the window. Be free. Uh, I went round to my mum's house, uh, her little office, where she coaches children. Um, she And she, she said, come on to my office, Joe, come on to my office. And uh, uh, she showed me like eight or nine little ladybirds all having a little sort of party in the win on the on the edge of the window frame yeah couple crawling across her desk three or four on the lampshade she's not doing anything about it well no she said to me oh, look look at these lovely ladybirds <laughs> there's so many of them but some of my pupils are uh, i don't like them they're, they're a bit disturbed by them i went mummy because i call her mummy i've Quite got right. no shame in 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 telling you that i'm not going to pretend that i call her ma no. or mum or mumbles it's mum I, well it's often no i'd have i'd have yeah i do call her mumbles sometimes yeah yeah Mom, and I, I said mummy uh these aren't nice ladybirds i've read about them on the internet they're harlequin ladybirds they're a plague they're a pest they're armed and she d she didn't look as if she believed me no she went mm, mm, you look at them though. did you eat that in the fortian times that's <laughs> probably what she thought they're nice look these ones are having a party they're singing if you listen very closely <laughs> you can hear them so sing. i was frustrated you know that sort of frustration it's a kind of deep primordial frustration you get when your parents don't believe you about something yeah it's like you never believe me you never respect me you think i'm still six i'm 84 <laughs> believe me woman uh but i was uh happy in one respect but also disturbed in the other respect to look closer behind the curtains of her office and find, and I do not exaggerate, 150 to 200 uh, of these ladybirds hiding in massive gangs between the pleats oh. of... Oh. And it was really genuinely revolting. When you pulled the... Uh, and, you know, my family are extremely hygienic. Yeah. This kind of thing never happens. We're very clean. Don't imagine we're some kind of Kim and Aggie type, you know, nasty household. No. It's a beautifully polished I've and respectful round. house. I can Yeah, can my mum especially and my dad are very clean people. Very much so. Uh, take hygiene very... Um, it's not like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre around there. Cop no. Cobwebs and no. people in cupboards. No, it's like the Texas home care it's, shop. It's exactly. It's like the Texas Delightful Tea Party. Yeah. Anyway, there were hundreds of them behind in the pleats of the curtains, and it, it was it was so troubling. First of all, the name is troubling. Harlequins are unsettling things, anyway. Yeah, you know, and they're called harlequins because they've got multiple spots. You recognise them because they're orangey, and they've got far too many spots. And and like you know, insects are troubling anyway. In a Silence of the Lambs kind of a way, moths. The designs on them are weird. They're like little dice or dominoes. You know, they seem to have some kind of cryptic meaning to them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. They're kind of troubling on a weird symbolic level. You could worship them as gods if you want. Yeah, or, or you could you could read meanings into them. You could join the dots up and make pictures and 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 you know run your life 
by it. You might even do that, but you know, I'm overdoing it. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. There were clusters of these horrible things, and every time we um we 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 pulled another pleat apart in the curtain, there were hundreds more. So we got the Hoover. Dead right. Uh, we hoovered them up. Oh, uh, Ghostbusters. We, yeah, Ghostbusters style exactly. And we couldn't believe it. We were going, oh, oh. I was going, mummy, look at it. Oh, mummy, look at this. <laughs> oh my God. She was going, oh, oh, oh my God, you came. <laughs> <laughs> it was hideous. And then, uh, when I got back to my office, I was freaked out. You know, you feel all creepy, crawly, and it's yeah. like, oh, did one of them get in my pants and my shoes? Plus, you just conducted a kind of, a, a massive, great, uh... A killing. killing. A cull. A cull exactly, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, but it didn't feel bad, because they're evil, they're nasty. Mm. The fact that they feel like sort of intruders, they ki they're killing all the real ladybirds, these harlequin ladybirds. Right. And they leave a horrible, stinky stain. Oh and um, they're not a nasty business. I got back to my office and I was terrified. I thought, if there's one or two crawling on my wall, I, have, and I don't really have a curtain in my office. I've just got a, a p lovely piece of material pinned up. Yeah. Uh, we haven't got around to putting curtains up there <laughs> after about seven years. Uh, I thought, and I haven't unpinned it for years. And I thought, oh my God, that, it could be like, you know, Indiana Jones is back at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Could be completely crawling with these things. And uh, it wasn't too bad. There were about 30 right. in clusters behind my curtain. I thought you were going to say there was just one giant one standing there. <laughs> <laughs> like Mimic. I yeah. get you. It was troubling but satisfying. I'm so glad they're gone. So, listeners, uh, check it out because it's happening in the winter because there's a cold snap. So these things are infesting Britain and they're coming in people's windows. Uh, you know, if you see an evil ladybird, they can be black with two red spots as well. Yeah. Uh, look closer at ladybirds, and if they're evil ones, kill them! Do you know who I blame? Al Gore. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Al Gore. Adam. Thanks very much, Al Gore. Uh, here's Ida Maria. Is that it? Oh, you never know with Ida. That's Ida Maria with Drive Away My Heart. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Play that jingle, Ben! It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. So check it out. Radios across the nation are detuned. <laughs> <laughs> Being switched off. Well, you know, I don't know. Some people like this. We've had one or two texts saying they like the songs. One or other of the songs. We should say, listeners, uh, it's time for Song Wars, the, the part of the show where me and Adam compose songs on a theme and then we kind of battle them. If you think you could do a better job on the theme, then do email us, uh, tell us who you are and, and write a song. And send it in, and if it's if it's as good as one of ours, which let's face it can't be that difficult, uh, we may well play it. So if you think you know this is rubbish, I could do better than that, then do it. Yeah, do better than that, and send it in, and we'll and we'll. It, it stands a very good chance of being played. So here we go. Here are the two songs this week. The theme is Christmas. Uh, let's go first with Adams. We're um, not going to play the whole thing, but we'll uh, we'll play a reminder. About, play about half of it, I reckon. Uh, maybe I quite like the middle eight. So we'll get to the middle eight. And middle then, eight uh, is it now? Call mm. it a day. Well, it's Christmas in the country, and I'm turning off the gas. I'm putting stickers on my face and painting on my legs. We're going to have a party, and I am so excited. There's going to be some parsley. Everyone's invited. Those people in the city have forgotten what Christmas means. But out here in the countryside, we know what Christmas means. Christmas country party time. Christmas party time. Christmas, 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 Christmas party time. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time. Germany party time. Christmas, Christmas country. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas bills. Party, party, Christmas time. Christmas country time. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time. Germany Christmas time. Is that enough? This is the middle eight. Is, oh, sorry, mate. Shh. This is, doesn't have any singing on it, though. It's a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, enough? No, it's good, though. Who Let's was, have some more. Who was, enough? That's enough, that's enough. Who was the band who did uh, Cotton Eye Joe? Keep it bubbling under there, Ben. Uh, I don't know. They were called Cotton Eye Joe. Rednecks. Rednecks. With an X. Yeah. That reminds I, I was kind of <laughs> I was sort of thinking about Rednecks when I'd done that. Wow, you aim high. Yeah. Only the best. Let's hear Joe Cornish's effort. Uh, this is my one. This is called All Night what? Garage. Oh, no! It's nine o'clock on Christmas Eve and I ain't got no presents yet. What am I gonna do? I'll have to go down the All Night Garage. All Night Garage, All Night Garage, Christmas shopping at the All Night Garage. All Night Garage, All Night Garage, Christmas shopping at the All Night Garage. All Night Garage, All Night Garage, Christmas shopping at the All Night Garage. 
Christmas shopping at the Ona Garage, Ona Garage, Ona Garage, Christmas shopping at the Ona Garage. Hello there, mate. Hello. How are you doing? I've got to buy some stuff for my Christmas. Will be real. We got dirty mags, nice and cold, after racing on lead petrol. Is that a DVD of this of fuel? Or is it double disc set with runaway jewelry or silent rage and dark force two in an action pack? That'll have to do. I'm not quite sure if my auntie Doris appreciates the Uber of Chuck Norris, but I've left it late and it's beginning to rain and on Christmas Day she can't complain. All night garage, all night garage, Christmas shopping at the all night garage, all night garage, all night garage. Christmas yeah, we can't let mine play for longer than yours, that'll be unfair, even though it's better. <laughs> oh, certainly some good uh, rhyming action there. Lyrically, maybe you have it's the edge. It's a bit thinly produced, my one. Lyrically, you have the edge. Musically, I'm not so sure. A couple, maybe a bit repetitious on the chorus there. Mm, people like repetition, Teletubbies. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Christmas, well, Christmas, well. Christmas time. <laughs> Christmas time. <laughs> and that's not time. repetitious? Christmas Just because you've got the word tourmaline. Fade Christmas it up, Ben, fade it up again. <laughs> Quickly, oh, loud. Garage, yeah, garage, this is music. Yes. Oh, it repeats six times. Shush, this is really, uh, oh. Okay, so that, that is, uh, that's Song Awards for this week. Get voting. And, of course, if you're listening again, don't text, just email. Uh, Adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Your, your, t- uh, your votes will be very important this week. Um, Maybe a yeah. few weeks before we actually announce the winners, because uh, next Saturday our show will be pre-recorded. In fact, we've already pre-recorded. It's a special Christmas show. It's a show, good though. show. We bought each other presents. It's a gift-giving special. We bought each other a series of presents. We unwrap them uh, on air, and all kinds of shenanigans ensue. That was fun, man. I had a good time it doing that It was fun. Show. We got a little bit drunk. We got a tiny bit tooty. And we decided it was okay to get drunk in the morning on Christmas Saturday next next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Next Saturday, uh, Gordon Brown has announced that everybody must be slightly tipsy before 9 a.m. Unless they have a pre-existing problem with alcohol. In which case they must be stone cold sober. Exactly. Now, here's a track that I've picked for you listeners. This is a man who I uh, am very fond of musically, Robin Hitchcock, and he this year re-released a lot of his stuff, including this album, his first solo album, I believe, after he uh, left the Soft Boys. Um... And the album is called Black Snake Diamond Roll. I really recommend it if you've never heard any of Robin's stuff. It's a good entry point. And uh, this is a lovely song called The Man Who Invented Himself. That's Robin Hitchcock with The Man Who Invented Himself. Just read out one more quick email before we go. This is from Colin the Gardener. He says, hey, you, not all ladybirds are a problem. The harlequin are still quite rare. These scare stories are going to have people killing out, killing off a fine insect. Blooming DJ types think you know everything. Stick to playing halfway decent music. That's a bit... No, I'm just going to go and kill a whole bunch of ladybirds <laughs> just to spite No, him. but there are two sides to every story, and uh, I, yeah, I, I hear you, Colin. Yeah, you want to be careful before you kill any kind of living thing. I feel you, Colin. Yeah. Um, what, if, what if the living thing really, really stinks? And... Like George Bush. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What? Well, no, you don't, you still wouldn't do that. No, you can't sink to his level. No, absolutely, you can't sink to his level. You just, you just, you just give him a different job. Give Maybe the, road sweeping. Give or, him the silent treatment. Um, clean in the lavies. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, we'll be with you kind of, uh, in a, in a, in, in a peculiar kind of way next week, but we will be here and it's a good show, so do listen. Yeah, exactly. We're not going anywhere. We'll, we'll be with you right the way through the Christmas and New Year period here on BBC Six Music. Thanks a lot for, uh, texting and emailing and all that stuff. We love you. Bye. Bye.